Hi, everyone. Uh, let's begin with the webinar. Uh, first of all, please let me introduce our company for that people that don't know about us. Asphalion is an international scientific and regulatory affairs consultancy with offices in Barcelona, Madrid, and Munich. We collaborate with pharma and biotech companies facilitating drug development and regulatory affairs projects for drugs, biologics, biosimilars, ATMPs, and medical devices. Our involvement ranges from early development through to registration and post-commercialization phases. We provide global services and work for hundreds of clients from around the world. Our services include regulatory and scientific strategy during development, medical and scientific writing, global submissions, e-submissions at IIM, lifecycle outsourcing, pharmacovigilance, and promoting the marketing registration of medical devices. In the pharmacovigilance unit at Asphalion, we work together with the objective of giving our clients the best services, which are summarized in this slide. Now, let me introduce myself. I am a drug safety officer in the pharmacovigilance unit where some of the tasks that we perform are ICSR management and submission, Spanish local contact affairs, safety database implementation with PCB manager, signal detection, UQPPV services, pharmacovigilance agreement review, PSMF and PBSOPs designing and writing, exhibit PD and literature searches. And now let's start with the webinar. We are going to go through all these topics, hopefully within 30 minutes. As you know, scientific and medical literature is an important source of information to identify suspected adverse reactions. As stated in GBP Module 6, marketing authorization holders are expected to maintain awareness of possible publications through a systematic literature review no less frequently than once a week. This results in a duplication of work by MAHs for active substances included in more than one medicinal products, as well as duplicated reports in neutravigilance. For this reason, MLM service was created based on Article 27. The service is operational since September 2015. Here, you can see the list of substances monitored by the agency. This list is published on EMA's website and includes 300 substances groups and 100 herbal groups. These active substances are selected based on medicinal product information submitted to Exhibit PD and for the products with a high number of marketing authorizations granted to various MAHs in the AEA. Be aware this list is subject to annual review in order to include more substances. Reference and useful documentation about the MLM service procedures can be found on EMA's website, like the description of the journal of data and that, sorry, like the description of, of databases used the criteria for, for processing ICSRs and their management of duplicates. Now, we are going to look at tracking spreadsheets. You should keep in mind that every day, EMA publishes the following spreadsheets in the old hydrovigilance system. MLM search results contains the results of the daily screening the agency is performing. MLM ICSRs includes a list of ICSRs managed and transmitted to hydrovigilance. And in the archive, we can find all the spreadsheets from the beginning of the service until nowadays. Here, you can see an example of an MLM spreadsheet, ICSR spreadsheet. On the first working day of each month, we can find monthly cumulative tabs with the full results of the previous month. You should remember that day zero for marketing authorization holders is the date 
of transmission of an ICSR by the MLM service to Hydra Vigilance. This date can be found in the transmission date column on MLM ICSR spreadsheet. You should take into account that this day zero only applies for internal communication timelines with partners and for our internal procedures. As you already know, since, since the 22nd of November 2017, all MLM ICSRs can be accessed via the new Hydra Vigilance system, which replaced the ICSR Export Manager. An ICSR download tool is available in EV Web in order to perform the search. Before performing the search, we, are to, we have to design the filters parameters needed. This step is the same for L2A and MLM cases. Filters should be added in order to, re to delimit the results. There are two types of filter, fixed filters, which include reports and dates, we ha which have to cover a maximum of 15 dates, and other optional filters, like primary source country, active substance, MLM group and combination, and literature reference. For more details about filtering, you can see our previous webinar about case management on Asphalion website. Regarding the fixed filters, we have the reports filter. For MLM cases, we should select MLM reports. The option with the combination of L2A and MLM reports should not be used unless you want to download all MLM cases. Regarding the optional filters, we have the primary source country filter. With this filter, we can select all the reports for a country with the field primary source for regulatory purposes checked. It isn't exactly, exactly the occurring country, but in most of the cases, it's the same. Now, we are going to look at active substance MLM group and combination filters. These filters should be used in order to retrieve MLM cases. Remember that all MAHs have full access to all MLM cases for substances that the agency is monitoring, regardless of any data they have in XCBMPD. For this reason, marketing authorization holders should create filters for MLM and not for MLM cases and not for L2A. Before the creation of the filters, you have to check the list of substances monitored by the agency. Active substance MLM group corresponds to the substance group column in the spreadsheet and the combinations to the column of substances. While it's technically possible to combine searches for groups and combination at the, at the same time, it's strongly recommended not to do so. If you search for both group and combination, then only ICSRs containing both will be returned. In conclusion, our advice is to check MLM substances list periodically, filter by active substance MLM group, date, and country, and don't set back MLM cases to Vetra Vigilance unless you have contacted the primary source and you have obtained additional first-hand information from them. As you should already know, we can use the workspace tool for visualizing XML files before entering them into the database. MLM cases can be detected by the literature report box at the end of the RGF or in the field literature reference in the workspace. Once you have downloaded the MLM cases, you should review them in order to identify if they belong to your products in the same way as L2A cases. During triage, you must establish your exclusion criteria. You can exclude the, the cases related with your product if the ACSR gives a brand name that isn't yours, if your company is not yet marketing the product in the occurring country, if the search form reported in the ICSR, you know, it's not the one approved for your product, 
and if the root of administration is, isn't the one approved for your product. Here, we have to be careful due to the possibility of medication error cases. Also, and if the case of and if the ICSR has already been downloaded or it's part of an already downloaded master case. All these justifications should be registered in order to remember the reason why an ICSR was excluded in the past. As you might have already noticed, it's very important to keep track of all your activities. With a simple Excel file with the following columns, you can register all these activities and decisions that we have gone through. We strongly recommend you, you record the activity in the same Excel file for the performance of the triage of MLM and L2A cases. For searches that retrieve not results, a screenshot of the result of the search would be enough. Nevertheless, you can also have another tab in the Excel file to register each screening and how many results it retrieve. Our recommendation is to establish internal procedures specific for these cases. You should review work instructions regarding literature searches and triage. Maybe you should also review the agreements with third parties and the PSMF. And in addition, you should carry out training about these new procedures. And the most important one, don't forget to record your activity. For literature searches, you should define what filters are you going to create, the period of the searches, the marketing country, which active substance MLM group are you going to choose, which frequency, and remember that it should be no less frequently than once a week, how are you going to record the activity, and also establish in which cases you'll perform a follow-up with the primary source. Regarding triage, you should establish the keywords for the exclusion criteria. It could be by brand name, dosage form, use of administration, marketing status, and if the case has already been downloaded. And also, how are you going to record the activity? In this slide, we can see which information of the pharmacovigilance system master file should be reviewed in especially modules 3, 5, and 6, and their corresponding annexes. In addition, it's possible that you should review your agreements with third parties in order to avoid duplicity of work and to establish new timelines and formats for the exchange of this information. Finally, you should carry out training according to the job description. This training can be on demand or it can be added to your annual training. You should perform an assessment and remember to monitor the performance. And that's it. This is the end of the webinar. And now if you are some questions, yeah, we are going to answer it. So feel free to ask anything.
So it seems that we haven't any questions. So thank you for your attention. Here you have our contact details in case they, in case that you need more information. And we hope we will see you in the future. And remember that there will be a webinar about EBITDA system in the following months. And thank you so much and have a nice day.